And three years ago, I had uterine cancer. This is my third time that I've had cancer. The first time was 18 years ago, I had breast cancer. And then two and a half years ago, I had uterine cancer. And then this is a, uterine cancer has come back. It's a very aggressive type of cancer. I have Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And neck cancer, throat cancer. My twin sister developed leukemia in 1968, and that was the first experience I had with a personal relationship with the person who had cancer. Uh, my little sister was diagnosed with cancer when I was 10. When I was five years old, in 2010, I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. When I first got the news, I was scared. I was nervous because I didn't know what was going on. And I wasn't really old enough to understand the concepts of cancer, so it was very, it was just frightening, um, the unknown. I was devastated. I just couldn't believe it because I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, and I just, I just couldn't believe it was me. I was angry. Uh, we had lived in our same house for 33 years and we just got moved into a new condo that we just loved and all the grandkids loved it and it's got a swimming pool and I looked forward to lots of years with the grandkids and then I was told I had this cancer that was already stage four and I should get my affairs in order. So I was pretty, pretty angry about it. Ready? Because they thought it was ovarian that had metastasized. And when they finally diagnosed me with the correct kind of cancer, I found out that even though it's not curable, it's very treatable and something that would prolong my life as opposed to my original diagnosis, which was pretty much a death sentence. I will be treated pretty much for the rest of my life because it's not something that goes away. There's no end in sight. Uh, well, there is, <laughs> but, <laughs> but not kind of the end that I want. Um, I, right now I'm going through maintenance chemo every other month. So every eight weeks I go in for my chemo. They didn't do much treatment for her in the hospital that she originally was diagnosed at, but she succumbed to it in June of 71. So it was almost a three full years but it eventually crossed the blood-brain barrier and went to her brain, at, at which time then she became very, very ill, and, and that's what uh, finally caused her death. I went through 
six chemotherapies. Uh, well, first I did 10 radiations because the cancer had spread to the bone. And I did the radiations and then for the last four radiations I started chemotherapy and that was a five and a half to six hour treatment every three weeks. I, um, I went through chemotherapy for about two years. I started in 2010 when I first got diagnosed and I stopped treatment in 2012, August 6th. I, I had my surgery uh, 2000, November 2008. I had uh, radiation and chemotherapy and surgery. And it took me about four months. I'm very fortunate. I had a wonderful gynecologist and I had told him I was spotting and he said right away, that's a sign of cancer. So he was very good and he said, let's follow up with it right away. Let's not hesitate in case it is. And so um, I took, my doctor took everything out and he um, followed up with chemo. The hardest part was the very first chemotherapy was during the time I was also taking radiation. And that first week I got violently sick to my stomach and couldn't hold anything down. And I lost seven pounds that week. The toughest part was being afraid to leave my children and trying to make sure they were prepared and not wanting them to be alone. The very hardest part was watching my parents who were just, just heartbroken and they were elderly at the time and it was such a toll. The toughest part for me, I think, was not really having that opportunity to kind of be a, a child, you know? Like, I was always in the hospital, and I was always, I had to grow up really quickly for me to really be able to handle what was being shoved on me. I didn't really have that opportunity to be, kind of joke around and be a child and be oblivious to the world. I had to grow up really quickly to make sure that I was doing everything that I said that I had to do to remain healthy and remain alive. The toughest part was, um, I guess, solitude. I was kind of just alone because my mom was always with taking care of my sister, so I learned to be very independent, but it was also very difficult. We dealt with it pretty good. I had a sidekick and that that is what helps you. A lot of the people we found um, that were having the chemo didn't have anybody. They came in taxi cabs. They would come at 6 o'clock and wait outside the door for the chemo to open because they didn't have somebody to really help them, no family to assist them, or the family didn't want to assist them. Mostly with humor because I find that music and humor are the two best medicines we have in this world. As I look back at it now, I think I, I was fortunate that I was in Michigan because I could get it off of my mind and it, it helped me to, it helped me because I was away and when I would go home I would be reminded of, every, of everything, of what we were losing, of the children and everything. So being a little bit out of town helped me deal with it on the surface. However, after she died, I realized I never did deal with it. I definitely dealt with it because of my mom. She never let me feel sorry for myself. She never let me mope. She never let me wallow in self-pity and, 
Oh, I have cancer. Wow. Every hospital that we were in was the party room, and we decorated signs everywhere. And it was always just a positive environment, and I think the way that I actually handled it was because of her. It has made my faith stronger, even though I've lost people that I loved. Um, I know she's in a better place, and, and that helps me to accept it. it. It's made me a lot more humble. It's made me realize that it can just be taken from you at any time. And you should really appreciate every single day and every single person. I think it's definitely made me stronger. I don't think I would be as mature and I don't think I would be as empathetic or I don't think I would be really as like who I am as a person today. Since it was when I was younger, it kind of set the stage for how I was supposed to act. Always remember who, like, where you are and remember that someone always has it worse than you. I think it, it, like I said, it made me very independent. I think it also made me more sympathetic, I guess, to people who go through terminal illnesses. I think you don't really understand it until you go through that or have someone who goes through that, so it made me a lot more sympathetic to those situations. Well, I couldn't do anything for about three years afterwards. It had a long recovery period for me. But since then, I have no problems. Well, I think my relationships have become much closer uh, with a lot of people. I see, I see the good in a lot of people. I'm, I'm much more aware of, of, of people's good hearts. Make everybody closer. Everybody tries to help you. I think it definitely made them stronger, especially for my sister and my mom. Of course my dad too, but at the time when I first got diagnosed and everything was really hard hitting, my father was in Columbus while we were still living in Michigan trying to sell the house. He, he did help and he drove my sister over to the hospital and we were there and she, she gave up her mom for me and, and my mom was always there spending nights at the hospital doing everything for me and we were always together, we were a little team. And I think that really helped my relationship with her and it helped my relationship with my sister because she was always at the hospital playing Legos with me, playing the little Xbox that they wheeled around the hospital, playing air hockey. And she, and I think it really strengthened our relationship. I would hope that it's made us appreciate, appreciate each other a little bit more. We're still gonna fight. We're still gonna get on each other's nerves. We're still gonna go through normal times. No matter what, you love each other and you try to let the people you love know that. It made me appreciate them even more. It made, made me realize how much I loved them and wanted to show them gratitude for just being. Have faith. Have faith. Anything can happen at any day. Life can just be taken from you anytime. Cancer strikes anybody and everybody. It affects everybody somehow. Let your friends know that you're thankful for them and that you appreciate them. And when they need help, you help. We will get cancer kicked. <laughs> you're not the only one that has problems. When you are in that hospital, look at all of the children, younger than you, older than you, everybody seeing all of these people who are going through these things and realizing that a lot of these people probably aren't going to come out alive. Life is a series of challenges and when Katie got sick, I, you think, well I had my challenge, done, I, I did that, now we're good to go. And and that's not true. Don't pass up any opportunities because you never know what's going to happen to you. Anybody and everybody can get cancer. I, I, it's just hard to believe that they, with all the cures out there for everything else, they haven't found a cure for cancer. How long you're here isn't it as important as what you do with it while you are here. Even if you feel like 
you know, oh, nothing bad will happen to me. It can happen at a very unexpected time. On your tombstone, there's going to be a date of birth and a date of death. And those aren't important. What's important is the dash in between. And we all need to make the most of the time that we have.